It's time now for the latest in local news. In the news, a reminder, we have just a police chief, Perry Morgan, in studio tomorrow morning to discuss his early resignation, which he ended in last Thursday at the city council meeting, stating that his resignation is effective today. He'll join us tomorrow on the world-famous Butch and Bob show. The city's named Chris Hamilton as interim chief of police as they'll conduct a application process, interview process, before announcing who the next police chief will, of Jessup will be. Once again, Perry Morgan's resignation as police chief effective today. He'll join us tomorrow morning here on the Butch and Bob show. Other story in the city of Jessup we continue to cover is who will be the next District 5 commissioner on the city council as the Jessup City Council has not been able to reach a decision. WIFOFM talked with Governor Kemp's Press Secretary Garrison Douglas yesterday. He tells us that they are currently in discussions with their attorneys to determine what the legal responsibility of the governor is. The question still remains, does the governor have to make an appointment or does he have the option of remaining out of the local political mess and let the voters decide the issue with the election set for November? Only problem with that scenario is that the seat would remain vacant until January of 2024. Jessup Council had three names, including a former mayor and former city manager, but neither could garner the necessary four votes to be appointed for the six-month period. The mayor of Jessup has called the situation an embarrassment. Once again, we should learn a decision from the governor's office this week as we continue to ask the question, does he have to make an appointment or not? Since we get the final answer, we'll pass that information along. Once again, qualifying for that seat begins August 21st. Qualifying fee a whopping $3. Election set for November. Winner takes office in January of 2024. We'll be back with more news after this word from our sponsor, the commercial messages of Police State. Wayne County Schools will soon be open, and Wayne County High School will hold a freshman orientation on Thursday, August 3rd, from 12.30 to 3 p.m. in the high school auditorium. This is for all incoming freshmen and is for students only. At 2.30, they'll ask parents to join their students for a brief informational session in the Wayne County High School auditorium. Then they'll visit teachers' classrooms for open house at 3 p.m. on that Thursday, August 3rd. Wayne County High School open house is for all grades and will be held on August 3rd from 3.30 to 6 p.m. Entry into the building will not be allowed until freshman orientation is completed. Students and parents may visit the classrooms until 6 p.m. Student schedules will be available on Parent Student Portal by July 25th and may be printed or downloaded. If you do not have access to your schedule, you may stop by Wayne County High School Commons area during open house to obtain the schedule. If you have a concern with repeated courses, blank spots in the schedule, or pathway completion needs, please use the Google form on the Wayne County School Counseling page to log your issue. All problems must be submitted by 3 p.m. on August 4th. Adjustments will be made if deemed necessary within the first week of school. Please do not make duplicate requests as it will backlog the system, causing delays for everyone. If you have a student who plans to drive, they will have two opportunities prior to the first day of school to purchase a parking decal July 25th and August 3rd. Parking permit request must be completed online. The Wayne County High School parking permit agreement can be found on the Red Track site. In addition to the agreement, students must purchase a parking permit on a Red Track in the amount of $30. Instructions for accessing the Red Track are as follows visit the website. Once at the Red Track website, click Wayne County High School, then click Parking Permits. Deadline to complete this process is set for July 24th at 12 noon. Supporting documents required include the following tag registration card, agreement signed by the student and parent, valid Georgia driver's license, and proof of current insurance. Please make sure all fields in the application are completed. Both parent and student signatures are on the agreement, and all documents are required at time of pickup. Students who successfully complete the online agreement and payment process for the parking permit will be able to pick up their parking decals on July 25th at the high school in the administration office room 802 with Mrs. Maynard. Seniors will be able to pick up their parking decals from 9 to 11, underclassmen from 1 to 3. There will be a second round of parking permit pickup at open house on August the 3rd. The deadline for this payment on the road track will be Wednesday, August 2nd. No parking permit requests will be made in person. All requests must be completed online. Carson Buddy Carter in studio with us last week. He also spent time speaking with the Wayne County Exchange Club, and thankfully he's fighting against the push to do away with AM radio. He was talking about that subject with the Exchange Club last week. It's Butch and Bob show, by the way. I was glad to be in the studio and glad every time. Really appreciate them giving me the opportunity to um, to be on the show. It's uh, obviously well listened to. And, and while we're talking about that, let me mention something that is of interest to, to them and should be of interest to all of you, and that's about the future of AM radio. Wow. Many of you may not know, but a lot of the electric vehicle manufacturers are not wanting to put AM radio in their cars. They are saying that the static interferes with the, with the batteries, or the batteries, the interference causes static. So 
that's one of the reason they're giving. Now, I'm, I'm not convinced that someone like Elon Musk can't figure that out and, and get that worked out as much as they, as much technology and as smart as these guys are. But they are wanting to do away with it. And the reason why I oppose it and the reason why I think it's a bad idea, one of the primary reasons is because of the emergency uh, emergency network that we have, the emergency response network that we have on the AM radios. Keep in mind now, AM radio has a, a larger, uh, longer bandwidth, a wider bandwidth, so it can cover a lot more area than the FM stations do. But that emergency response network that we have is extremely important to us here in the first district, primarily because of hurricanes. Uh, you know, we got to have communication whenever we have cable go out or whatever might happen. Uh, when are you allowed to get back into your community, particularly on the islands? And remember, I have the honor and privilege of representing the entire coast of Georgia, so the barrier islands are very important. We had this problem a couple of years ago when we had a hurricane and on St. Simons. Everybody's wanting to get back and see them, check on their property and everything. And, that was a big concern, and there was a, a lot of problems with the communication on when they were going to let you get back over the bridge and when they weren't. So the emergency response network is extremely important on AM radio. Other reasons why it's important is because it's, it's prevalent, uh, especially in rural Georgia, in rural areas. It's important for a lot of the Spanish-speaking stations, and a lot of them have... Uh, the, the AM radios and have programs on that as well as for minority stations and that's that's extremely important so that's something we're going to be looking at very closely I serve on the Energy and Commerce Committee in Congress and we have jurisdiction over that area in fact I'm vice chair of that subcommittee of the technology and communication subcommittee so uh, that that's going to be right in our area we're, we're going to be dealing with that and those comments, uh, Congressman Buddy Carter again in studio and at the Exchange Club last week. We'll be back with some final news notes after this word from our sponsor, the commercial messages, so please stay tuned. Final notes news, kids love trucks, and on Saturday, August 5th in downtown Jessica Walnut, North Macon, and Northeast Broad Streets, the Wayne County Board of Tourism is sponsoring a Touch a Truck Day for kids from 9 to 2, all types of trucks on hand for kids to come touch and sit in the driver's seat, have a good time. There will be food vendors and booths if you need more information or you'd like to participate with your truck. Contact either Heather Altman at the Tourism Board office at 912-427-3233 or Donnie Ray at 912-424-0376. Again, it's called Touch It Truck Day, Saturday, August 5th from 9 to 2 in downtown Jessup at Walnut, North Macon, and Northeast Broad Streets. Wayne County Superior Court will be in session tomorrow. Judge Stephen Kelly on hand with drug court. Again, the judges invite the county commissioners to drug court to watch the graduation ceremony tomorrow morning beginning at 9.30 a.m. Hospice Side Georgia selling tickets at their market to midnight fundraising event set for Saturday night, August 26, from 7.30 to midnight at the Wayne County Farmer's Market. Features the band's six-piece suits. Tickets are $15. The tickets are available now at Hospice Side Georgia. The night will include silent auction items, food vendors, and other entertainment. If you need more information or a ticket, call Kylie McGregor at 912-588-0080. And again, schools will soon be back in session. Long County Health Department has two more school vaccination and screening events this summer for children and teens. The date's July 13th and August 24th. Appointments can be made by calling the Health Department at 912-545-2107. They state all students entering pre-K, kindergarten, or entering a Georgia school for the first time must have proof of vaccinations and must complete a vision, hearing, dental, and nutritional screening. Clinics are scheduled from 8.30 to 11.30 in the morning, 1 to 5.30 in the afternoon. Again, the date's July 13th and August 24th. Number again to make a reservation, 912-545-2107. And that's going to do it for the latest in local news. Sports comes your way in a few minutes. Bob Morgan, have a great day.